Best I can tell, you've been walking around with two broken legs for weeks. When do I go back? You ever again land on those legs of yours, those bones will turn to powder. Plenty other ways to serve your country. You want it to be special forces? Yes, sir. Why do you want to join the CIA? I'd like to help my country make a difference in the world. The average test time is five hours. I'm done, sir. It's been 40 minutes. 38 minutes? What should I do now? Whatever you want. The deputy director of the NSA offered me a new position. Can you tell me anything about it? <laughs> you know I can't. Find the terrorist in the internet haystack. You're making people very happy. Thank you. You ready for a little action? Oh, this looks juicy. How is this all possible? Think of it as a Google search, except instead of searching only what people make public, we're also looking at everything they don't. Emails, chats, SMS, whatever. Yeah, but which people? The whole kingdom, Snow White. The NSA is really tracking every cell phone in the world. Most Americans don't want freedom. They want security. Except people, they don't even know they've made that bargain. Are they watching us? There's something going on inside the government that's really wrong, and I can't ignore it. I just want to get this data to the world. Hey, hey. I feel like I'm made to do this, and if I don't do it, then... I don't know anybody else that can. This is everything I have. They're gonna figure out what I've done. Did you access an unauthorized program? The government knows that we have these documents now. You're looking at a possible death sentence. I can't turn back from this. Watch yourself. We are running out of time. They're gonna come for me. They're going to come for all of you, too. I see all the beautiful faces. <laughs> no, I think it's been wonderful. I really enjoy it. It's a great honor to be able to make movies. And sometimes you hit the sweet spot. It's really nice. And, uh, Where are you from? Where are you from? Italy? From Rome. Yeah, Do you, you like Rome? From Pescara. Oh. I love uh, Italy. It's always been fun to come. They like the movies. And uh, uh, he's no then a hero or a devil. Ah, yeah. You decide after you see the movie. I think <laughs> he's done much good service, public service. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, it's one of many. I wanted to be a good American. Volevo servire il mio paese. Non vedevo l'ora di combattere la mia prima guerra. Tanto per cominciare, giovanotti, mettiamo molto bene in chiaro una cosa. Non tutti possono diventare Marines degli Stati Uniti. I nostri padri hanno fatto la seconda guerra mondiale e questa è la nostra occasione. Potrebbe essere pericoloso laggiù, lo sai. Potresti, potresti farti uccidere, non ci hai mai pensato. Gesù, aiutami a prendere la giusta decisione. Certe volte credo che vorrei rimanere qui e non partire. Ma devo andare. 13.000 miglia. È un viaggio lungo per andare a combattere. Sai che cosa vuol dire per me essere un marine, papà? L'ho desiderato fin da quando ero un ragazzino. Desideravo servire il mio paese. Io voglio andare in Vietnam e morirci se sarà necessario. Devi cercare di restare vivo, ok? Ti senti? Stasera la polizia di Chicago ha caricato la folla che si era radunata per manifestare pacificamente il proprio dissenso sulla questione Vietnam.
siamo qui per dire la verità. No, alla guerra! La gente dice che se non ami l'America è meglio che te ne vai. Rosso schifoso! Bene, io amo l'America. Outrageous uh, dialogue, and I don't think they ever recovered from that. They still, they still think, uh, I think, like those people. But, uh, that's their problem. Uh, no, that was a very a character I knew, Richard Boyle, based on uh, him, and uh, those, he's the way he was. He was desperate and down to his last dollar. And, and the other fellow was his, uh, a, disc, a disc jockey in San Francisco on the trip. So it was uh, truly an adventure, but uh, I think. A lot of women never recovered and, and think that I uh, despise women or something. It's a kind of mentality that gets you in the way. It's just, it's a, they don't understand this difference sometimes between the messenger her and the message. You know. I'm, oh, I'm hearing Italian here. That's I, the theme uh, the of the 80s was uh, Reagan-esque. And did you feel that in the studios? I've, well, I've always had problems. This film was made independently with a British company called Hemdale. Very little money. No, I was always, uh, after a certain point, most of my movies were rejected by the studios. It was too realistic, too downbeat. Platoon came right after this. That, that too, has, was rejected for 10 years and was made independently. And finally, uh, with Wall Street, they, they let me make a film with a major studio, and then uh, there's a few more, but basically I had to work uh, pretty, pretty, I would say, alone, you know, alone outside that system. Could you talk about any of the work you did in preparing for Salvador in terms of the kind of vision of that conflict that you want to get across? Well, I prepared by actually going back to Salvador with Boyle, and we hobnobbed with both sides. Uh, he, um, our sympathies uh, at that point in 85 were with the guerrillas because so many of them had been tortured and killed in the death squad by active. The right wing was very friendly and they let us in, partly because they respected me as a, uh, the man who wrote Scarface. And they loved Scarface, uh, very much so. I was a hero, and I actually got to meet all the right wing big big shots, including Dobesson. And uh, you saw the scenes in the movie. If you see them, they they actually you know you get a feeling for that mentality, that ring. This was a time when Reagan. I have to say, this was a time when my own personal philosophy was changing. I'd been in Vietnam. I'd seen this kind of thing before on a, another scale, but now uh, to see it again at an older age, uh, 15 years later was shocking, uh, and to see the American troops in Honduras, these advisors in Salvador doing it illegally, supporting the death squads, and all their behavior, and also Guatemala had been a disaster, but above all, you have to remember we were fighting, we were supporting the Contras in uh, Nicaragua, and that was a very ugly situation. So there was nothing to, uh, it was pretty clear that the United States was on the wrong side of history on this one, because the uh, reform movement and the labor leaders were being killed very brutally. So of course, that is very, uh, you know, it certainly cemented my viewpoint and I was very sympathetic to the, to the rebels. If I answer that question you keep asking, if I give you the name of the big enchilada, you know, then it's Bon Voyage Dino. I mean like permanent, I mean like a bullet in my head, you dig? Does that help you see my problem a little better? Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flash of light in the bushes, and then shots rang out. No more cloak and dagger stuff, you know. They call it Operation Mongoose. It's gonna be okay, Dave. You just talk to us on the record, and we'll protect you. And I guarantee it. You are so naive. You found us in your office. We think the conference room is also about maybe the phones. I'm not cooperating here. I'm not cooperating here. Listen, there's a death warrant for me. Are the same people going to kill us, Pop? Nobody's going to kill us. Y'all got to get into your minds how the hell the spooks think. Now, they're not ordinary crooks. Think the unthinkable. Question everything. Now, we're through the looking glass here, people. White is black, and black is white. Thank <laughs> you.
You don't believe me? Huh? All this time, you never believe me. I just want to raise our children and live a normal life. I want my life back. Dude, hey, hey, look, this thing's bigger than all of us. Now, how many corpses is it going to take for you lawyers to figure out what you want? Like people got to know. People got to know why he was killed. Do you know what you've done to me? I'm a dead man! Unless I can kill the president, they can certainly get me. You're a mouse fighting a gorilla. You're close. You're closer than you think. There's going to be an attempt to kill you somewhere between here and New Orleans. And I say let justice be done over heaven's fall. The 1980s the Reagan era, and uh, it was an era of deregulation. And many of these outsiders like Echo were taking, jumping into corporations, buying them up against, these were sometimes large corporations, but they were using every technique possible, including frontal attacks on the corporate board, green mail, using uh, treachery in some cases, uh, lying and taking control of companies. Now some of these companies were, were definitely decadent and uh, there was some successes, but generally these people were more interested in making a buck, uh, which is to say, take over the company, turn it around, make it work, and then sell it off. And there's arguments both ways that that's good for capitalism, but capitalism is a very dangerous thing. Once it's loose, it's a beast, and it really runs fast and destroys many jobs. And in this case, this particular company is sold later in the film by Gecko and Charlie Sheen uh, is involved, and it's a, it, it gets very ugly, and then eventually Gecko turns on, uh, on the company in which his father worked, in which Sheen's father works. So they, they, they're not trustworthy people. These people are out for a dollar. Now in the United States, when you look at this movie from 1987, look at the numbers, I mean $200,000. It's a big number, but now <laughs> what's happened is the greed has become insanely loose. And uh, a, a million dollars, a hundred million dollars is now a billion dollars. And, and uh, there's been a tremendous price to pay, as everyone says, the Reagan, had, Reagan people destroyed, started to destroy the middle class of America. And that's really what's happened. Jobs were exported overseas, factories had closed, working factories, all to make an extra profit. And profit has driven to us to this place where there's a gigantic uh, income differential between upper and, and lower. This is terrible for America, terrible for our economy. And this given rise to Trump, you mentioned Trump, and you know, Trump comes from that discontent. That middle class is, 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 white middle class is backing him to a certain degree because he represents the genuine anger about what the neoliberal economy has done. Hillary Clinton is associated with the old trade deal, for example, NAFTA. There was other trade agreements made. Jobs were exported. So there's genuine anger. But overall, this economy has benefited, most of all, these type of people. Gecko, in the 1987, became the banks of, the, of 2008. When I went back to do the sequel, I was shocked, shocked by the new Wall Street. There was no sense that the banks were doing what they were supposed to be doing when I was young, which was a separation between commerce and investment. And now the banks are out for themselves, like Gordon Gecko is out for himself, making as much money as possible. The figures are ridiculous. Now we have companies that are too big to fail, and we're supporting them. Uh, it's a real mess, and uh, it's still, I don't, you know, it's not an easy problem to fix. Wall Street is no longer the Wall Street of my father's time. There's no sense of accountability. The bigger you are, the better off you are because you can make the bigger moves. But everyone, companies are buying up other companies. I, I really feel we need to have individual companies, more companies competing with each other. It would be a healthier economy. More hand, more, more craftsmen, more respect for work. Uh, I, miss, I miss very much the old days. Everybody in. The ceremony is about to begin. <laughs> John Densmore, percussionist, 22 years old. Far out. Uh, Pamela Morrison, ornament. Raymond Daniel Manzarek, 12239, position. Name, occupation? Uh, Jim. 
You know the day destroys the night. Night divides the day. Sides are being chosen. The planet is screaming for change, Morrison. We gotta make the myths. Oh! The Indians say the first shaman invented sex. Break on through to the other. They call him the one who makes you crazy. I'm the lizard king. I can do anything. Jim Morrison, the god of rock. The guys at Network have told us that they have a little problem with the lyric, girl, we couldn't get much higher. They asked if you could say instead, girl, we can't get much better. Can you dig that? Girl, we couldn't get much higher. I love it when you sing to me. I'm the poet and you're my muse. Do you hear them out there? Do they want now? Try drinking blood. Mr. Morrison, you've gone too far. You're a poet, not a rock star. What are you going to do for Act 3? Go on, kill me. Come on, give me some death. Let's just say I was testing the bounds of reality. Before dawn, he put his boots on. You know the day destroys the night, night divides the day. And I think it was the moment that it keeps getting shown. So, you know, it's a strange fate. Uh, most people would not die like that. But it worked for cinema. And the music uh, came to us. George De La Rue was the appointed composer, and he was always uh, in a tough, he'd done Salvador, a great job. He's, we found this as a work tech track. They call them a work track. When you're doing the editing, you, you use the music, uh, and it's used temporarily. Composer. Poor George, he was the loveliest man, George Delivery, and he tried, he, he tried to match this uh, music. Uh, and as you know, Samuel Barber is one of his most famous uh, compositions. It's incredibly beautiful, and it certainly worked for our, our heartstrings. Uh, and uh, he never did match it, so he worked endlessly, and we ended up using the temp track, which broke his heart, but he, did, he knew it was the right call. And he did write the other music in the movie, the, a lot of the Asiatic music, which he did based on a lot of the, we did it with the, actually I think the RAN, R-A-N track from Kurosawa, so it was also an inspiration.